It's a great pleasure talking to you right here on China's television. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Shil. Yes. Nice to be with you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's a very interesting moment we are in as a country. And I know you're someone who is passionate about this country. You speak about it, you breathe it. Um, let me first and foremost begin by asking you your view on the state of the nation as it is right now. I know 2023 is around the corner. People are talking about it. It might look far from some people's point of view, but it does look like there is a Nigeria that Na those who love Nigeria want to see, but they are yet not seeing it. What is your view on the state of the nation? Well, um, thank you so very much, Shion. Other than trusting God and keeping up our life, um, this is not the Nigeria we envisioned. Uh, not only as young people, but in recent, in recent past. Uh, it's a say we are again at the precipice, uh, but Nigeria has a way of bouncing back. So we are full of hope that God Almighty will help us, but we're in a very perplexing situation as a nation. Many things that uh, we didn't see before are happening now. And even the president himself said so. He said nothing worries or bothers him like what is happening in the Northwest, especially the banditry and kidnapping. Um, there might have been uh, sporadic uh, occurrences here and there in the past, but now it comes with bewildering rapidity that uh, you are not even sure of your own personal security or safety. And, and traveling now, thank God for COVID. Uh, we, we don't want him to stay, but COVID had kind, kind of kept people in their homes. It's horrible. Are you surprised by what is happening, considering uh, your insight into how this government came into being and what we are seeing today? Are you surprised in any way that this kind of thing is happening? Surprise will be a good thing for me. When someone says, are you surprised? Uh, I always would like to use that word as uh, <laughs> an exciting thing. Wow, surprised to see you. You understand me? I'm not surprised. I'm terribly, terribly. Uh, uh, shocked by the things that are happening. I never envisaged it. We're full of hope and we put everything by the grace of God that we had and not just me, we, I said, uh, to ensure that uh, APC will win this election with a promise of change Nigerians were very hopeful. I was. And, uh, but you see, God alone knows tomorrow. And we can put our hands in his hands and ask him to help us out of our present dilemma. So for, for some reasons, um, you, you hope for a better Nigeria. Definitely. But it's not the hope that you had that you are seeing right now, not what you envisage at the time that you are seeing right now. How does that make you feel? Well, it's very straightforward. I talk straight from scripture. It's that hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. It's as if uh, <laughs> uh, this hope has been so deferred uh, that it makes one's heart sick. But we still believe that Jesus is the healer. And the, the nation also has a soul that has been traumatized and dented in so many ways. The psyche of this nation has been badly bruised uh, by the occurrences all around us, east, west, north, and south of our country. And God forbid, they will become a pariah nation again. You had a trust, and that's why you, you did what you did. Um, when you said we the other time, it does look like you and some of your friends helped the APC in whatever manner in which you did. And you had a trust in the person of President Buhari, for example. Um, is that trust still there as we speak? Well, the Bible says we should not trust 
the arms of flesh or put our trust in princes. The only person you can trust absolutely is God Almighty because the arms of flesh will fail. The best of men are still men at the very best. I, from his own utterance, especially when he granted the last interview, the few occasions he had spoken to this nation, he himself was overwhelmed by the things happening. And so a tree does not make a forest. And uh, if I wind his shoes, and I'm not the president, and I'm not suggesting anything or trying to, uh, uh, you know, flight a kite there, I will try other things. If what I've been doing does not work, maybe it's another time to look uh, for those who can really deliver instead of this doldrum. We have been going around about this mountain for eight years. Something needs to be done if he's mindful of his legacy, and that's been my cry, that's all. If there's going to be a, an outstanding, enduring legacy that cannot easily be erased or rubbished, some things need to be done uh, very, very soon. Um, so whatever it is, uh, they must sit down and put on their thinking cap and say, look, we cannot let it continue this way. In terms of assessment right now, um, in, in a situation you either assess it as a, a failure, as a work in progress, or as a pass, how would you describe the situation in the last six years? A six-year-old child that is still crawling, has problems. Uh, you want to examine or call the doctors to come in, a pediatrician and say, that this child was given birth to six years ago, but he's been crawling on, or just moving on his buttocks and on his knees and he's not running, he's not walking, something is wrong. And so if you're going to assess, we need a serious political Medicare. There is no problem that is devoid of solution. Human beings are given authority and dominion. We are supposed to be answers to problems and solutions to crises that we are in. If you get the right team and the right people who are doing the right things at the right time, we'll get results. But would you say it's a failure in the last six years? If there's something uh, I like to use my own words. Uh, uh, failure will look like uh, uh, try again. You, know, you can still do something with it. I, I once failed an exam mathematics. <laughs> uh, in 1973, I sat for exam and, and I got what we call inverted six, which is nine <laughs> in mathematics, but she I met a friend of mine who is late now, uh, Ahmed Abebefe, who was a genius in mathematics in secondary school, but his, his English was terrible. And I was very good in English. I won the Nigeria Red Cross Club in, <laughs> for balloon debate. I could speak English back then. Uh, my English now needs to be improved upon. <laughs> I called him aside. I said, Ahmed, he said, yes, your English is bad. My mathematics is worse. Give me three days in a week after school. I'll give you two days, and we can help each other and cross fertilize ideas. You know the end product? You can check why. I still have my results. There's nothing to hide. I scored a C5 in mathematics. I made up at the first scored a C5 in English. We can help ourselves. Yes, there's gross failure. It's apparent to everyone, but you can fail forward. Is this the same worry that you had hand in hand run with that you have right now? I don't understand your question because I sat with the president almost every month or every other month uh, since he became the president of this country and I've not seen any change in his mental capacity. Uh, I've said that to people who, who, who believe it must be another worry. It's the same person. So the point, the point I'm making or the question I'm asking is, you had a trust, I mean, you ran with him, you had a trust in helping his party and himself to win an election. And so that trust, something must have happened between that time that you had a trust and now that you think that they're not doing what they should do for Nigeria. So that's the reason why I'm asking that. Is it the same person you trusted that is on right now? And I'm going to give a premise because it does look like your relationship with him has fallen apart. Who said that? I mean, you said that um, 
um, you loved him, you uh, you respected him, but now uh, in your, one of your sermon a few weeks ago, is it the same person you're referring to in that sermon? That's your own connotation of what I said. I said I'd served, I'd respected, I'd loved, but I would not keep quiet, do you understand me, and let things fall apart. You do not sacrifice truth on the altar of friendship. Any friendship that ends never started. So do not think that uh, uh, there's crisis or we're not talking or we're not seeing each other. No, 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 no. It's not like that. But I had to cry out in case he's not aware of all these things that are happening around him. But you also said that um, you are not afraid uh, that if it comes in your way, that's, I mean, you, in the manner in which you spoke, it does look like there is a tendency that anybody who speaks out is being, um, they come after such people. Let me tell you what led to that particular statement. It was horrifying to me to live in a country where security men will invade the home of a private citizen who has not been charged for any crime. And they will kill people and drag the blood of those people on the floor. That can happen to any citizen. And it's not, I don't think it was President Buhari who went into that place to do it. I was talking to those people. That is a civilized world, except we are beasts and we are in an animal kingdom. You don't do that. What's the, we are the place of the rule of law. If someone had done something wrong, arrest him, prosecute him. But don't invade this privacy in the dead of the night like a guest apple and kill people and damage the house. Look, I'm not, I'm not in support of any secessionist move. We are better off together, but in a free and fair environment where citizens' rights are protected, nobody's above the law. Respectfully, I would say not even the president of a nation is above the law. And if they have immunity today, how about tomorrow? How many presidents from Europe or elsewhere and Africa had ended up at the International Criminal Justice, uh, International Court of whatever it is, I, ICJ? That was my concern. And those who could do that in the dead of the night can do it to any citizen. So I was addressing them directly. Not necessarily President Buhari. President so, Buhari did not go into the home of that person, did he? So, but, but, but your relationship with him is still intact. You are looking from outside. You are not seeing inside. Even if friends, best friends, disagree and fight among, between themselves, that does not bring an end to the friendship. I, I believe you are married and you have children. Have you disagree with your wife? Did that lead to divorce? You can disagree in friendship. You agree to disagree. You just disagree to agree. Is it possible that you have spoken to him afterwards? He traveled and he just came back. He traveled to the UK. Uh, I spoke on the 25th of July. The, the sermon you are talking about, he left on the 26th. And he came back on Friday. I just returned from Abuja on Friday. And if you want me to show you proof, I can show you invitation cards to his son's wedding. In all of this, because the, the, the sermon and the one that preceded the other one you're talking about, it does look like um, uh, you, you try to explain what you meant in the first sermon. And uh, it, it, it looks like maybe you, you reviewed or you changed your mind. Uh, just to be clear to Nigerians that maybe you have been approached or someone has spoken to you is it that you still maintain what you said? The second sermon you're referring to, I just made clarification. Because one of the troubles that we have in this nation is social media. They'll take a, a snapshot, a little thing that you've said, they throw it out as if this is the whole thing. The essence of that message is simple. Let's put on our thinking cap, ladies and gentlemen. Solomon... The king of Israel was won twice by God not to go into idolatry. He went into idolatry. God took the kingdom away from him and gave to Jeroboam, his servant. 
took 10 tribes out of 12 and gave to Jeroboam and gave the household of David or the dynasty of David only two tribes, Benjamin and Judah. And now Jeroboam, who benefited from the blunders of Solomon, now is erecting idols for Israel to worship. So he got took it away from <laughs> Solomon because of idolatry and gave it to Jeroboam. And Jeroboam is perpetrating the same evil. What do you think that God of justice would do? So if the basis of saying we're tired of PDP is insecurity and corruption, and right before our eyes is getting worse, we need to cry out and say, wait a minute, we are not getting our acts together. That's all. I stand by that conviction. I meant every word of it. And I've said it in private before it became a public thing. All I was trying to say is, hey, wait a minute. Any friendship that ends never started. That does not mean, oh, go your way and go my way. We are in divorce court. No, but we must not sacrifice truth on the altar of friendship. A friend that flatters his friend is, is a mortal enemy. You spoke as far as you, uh, you gave as much details as your conversation with him in the bedroom and what God told you. What is God telling you now? You want me to repeat everything that I said before? Do you have all the time? <laughs> no, no. Maybe the important part of uh, uh, about me. The, the question I'm asking Look, is specific. President Wari stood in public. I was his running mate. He wept and we wept. And said, this is the last time I will offer myself for public service in this country. And we lost that election. And then God visited me in a powerful vision. And I realized it must still come back. And so I went over to the UK and said, Mr. President, or Your Excellency, this is what the Lord had showed me. You need to come back. But we must put major before election. I took two people with me. They are still alive. And he said, no, 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 no. I'd given my word to the public that I would never offer myself again. I said, you're not King Herod, sir. Who said I'd spoken therefore John the Baptist's head must be, must be severed. He must be beheaded. No. Let us do the right thing first. If there's major, we win this election. He said, I don't see how you can work out the major. Go and work it out. And, and when it was too much, he said, okay, see what you can do. And we ran here and there, uh, called those who could influence those who held uh, uh, political powers, especially in the Southwest, and were able to influence that change. It was my privilege to move the motion uh, for the major of AC, AC uh, OSCN and CPC and ANPP at the Eagle Square. And after that, when three, four legacy parties came together, it was not reasonable for the same CPC to produce both the, <laughs> both the presidential candidate and, and the running mate. And I said, look, I'll be in the background and I'll be supporting every way and every manner I could. And God knows I've given my best to this administration and to this nation, and I will continue to do so in the days to come because there's no other country I can call my own. Do we have the privilege today to hear what God has told you about the nearest future? Yes, you do. Can you give us an idea of what, an insight into what God has spoken? In the vision that I saw that led me to go and tell him, you are coming back. In that vision, we were in a vehicle. They call it Bole Kaja. It's not common. I've not seen it in a long time. Maybe they're still in the rural areas. And we're going towards the Southwest to meet the elders uh, of the Southwest, the political uh, uh, juggernauts of the Southwest, in order to forge a merger. And we got a very, very steep slope. And he parked the vehicle that way and came down and said, I would like to ease myself and I will join you soon. When he left, I spoke to the two people behind my back. One is late now, that's Yinka Odumake, and the other person is Nasira Erufai in that vision. I said, where we are is dangerous. Let me repack this vehicle as we wait for him. And I went to the driver's seat, and behold, there was no steering, no ignition key, no gearbox, no pedals, no handbrake. He took everything down with him. And I came to myself. And I said, wow, there's still something for this man to do to move the vehicle of this nation forward. 
And when all the things began and all we're seeing is, oh, um, and you, you have, everybody had said it, love sided this, love sided that, nepotism here, this one there, and all kinds of things being spoken by Nigerians. Well, those who could influence change try their best. Let me tell you this. I have confidence in God that every part that was taken down are replaceable because the engine is still intact. That's my hope. That's deep. I mean, so for those who perhaps uh, are thinking that this is much like a proverb to them, um, can you break it down for a clarity of mind and focus uh, on what exactly the future holds for Nigeria? Nigeria is bigger than any individual. Eight years look like a long time, but it's coming to an end. Nigeria is bigger than all of us, and you will do your part and I will do my part. Look, recent, recent uh, polls that we did, social polls, in the past 10 or more years, over 30 million Nigerians who are <laughs> of voting age are not voted. We need to break that logjam, by the grace of God, break the, the voters' lethargy and let Nigerians see a better future for ourselves and paint a picture that is actionable. And reach out to them and said, let us arise and rebuild our nation, even if you have to start from the ancient ruins. I'd like to also make a uh, get a clarification. You, you said it turned against you. Did he in any way do that? Turn against? I mean, in one of the messages, you, you, when you say you, you loved him, you walked, he served him, but he turned against you. Was yeah. that? It's, look, when... Uh, I'll, I'll give you this example, and I'm not trying to dance away from anything. There has been no, and I say it privately and publicly, wherever I have the opportunity, there has been no understanding between us that you do scratch my back, I scratch your back. If I do this for you, do that. No. None whatsoever. You have not made any promise to me about, oh, this will be what you will get uh, if you do this. Neither have I made any promise to him. I will not deny my faith or my God or my conscience in any shape or form. Now, every time you hear you, I, I want you to understand that in a single person can be a nation. Goliath said to Israel, give me one man to fight with me. If I kill him, you all become our servants. If he kills me, we all become your servant. There is a we in I. When God said, Israel is my son, my firstborn, he said, let Israel go. But in chapter 5 of Exodus, he said, let my people go. So in that statement, there are too many people that are anti the progress of this nation that are acting contrary to what we all agreed upon as the template to move this nation forward. And I will articulate that by the grace of God, God giving me life on October the 10th when I do my State of the Nation broadcast one more time. I'm not giving up on this nation. I'm not going to give up. So there are cabals. There are hands behind the power. I don't care. I don't care to call them cabals because they mean nothing to me. They can do all the evil they are doing against 200 million Nigerians who are losing hope, who are fleeing their country and going to other countries and who are fleeing their farms because of those who are coming there to kill them, there's a God of justice who will not let them also lay down in peace because he who kills by sword shall be killed by the sword, and he who lives into captivity shall be led into captivity. This is the faith and the patience of the saints of God. We have confidence in God, the God of justice. There have been worse situations in times past. There have been warlords who thought they were in charge of Nigeria. Look, as long as you continue to learn from the past, you, you are better prepared, according to Theodore Roosevelt, to prepare yourself for the future that you don't know. Those who do not learn from history ultimately will become history. Have you, you seem to be very irritated by the activities of these people whom I describe as cabal or the hands behind the power. Have you warned President Buhari uh, about these sort of people whom you, you've described as much that, like they are around him. 
You just need one rotten apple to destroy a whole apple cart. It will be self-deceiving, even of Mr. President, to think that everyone around him is doing what is expected to do. People don't do what you expect. They do what you expect. The bulk ends on his table. It stops there. Tomorrow, they are not going to blame anyone who did something wrong. They are going to say Buhari's administration. So what are you telling President Buhari today? Wake up and smell the coffee. You, you, you spoke about a new movement which you said you will lead. And uh, uh, what will that movement be called? It has to, there are two sides of the same coin. The first time I spoke about it, I said, Nigerians for Nigeria is an appeal to those who are in the diaspora to remember their country. Like the Sam said, uh, uh, by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down, and there we wept when we remember Zion. And those who are in captivity, they said we should sing them the song of Zion. How shall we sing the song of the Lord in, the, in a strange land? And he said, if I forget you, Jerusalem, let my tongue cling to the upper roof of my mouth. I've gone to the, those in diaspora, in North America, in Australia, in Europe, to stir them up that Nigeria needs you. You have come here to learn what works. Let us begin to think about bringing it back home to fix our country because don't expect the, the powers that be, the Western world, to fix Nigeria. It will take Nigerians to fix Nigeria. That's the first time I spoke about. The second time, Nigeria for Nigerians is a different ball game. The profit of the land, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 9, the profit of the land is for all. And even the king is served from the field. So we are talking about those in the diaspora and those at home to rise up and fix this nation for the benefit of generations that are losing hope now and for the benefit of those who are here to be born because this is not the Nigeria that served us, that provided for us. This is not the Nigeria that, that uh, look, but for Western, uh, for free education in, the, in, the, in Western region, uh, that began just a year uh, after I was born in 1950. I think it started in 54. Uh, I was born in, in 55. I was born in 54. But for that free education, I probably would not have gone to school. And then free education prepared me. I had no money to go to secondary school. I was brought here to Lagos to learn carpentry. But my teacher in primary school, Mr. Samuel Adeoguni, he went to my mother. I said, don't waste that boy's brain. Whatever you have to sell to do, he must come back. And he engaged me with primary six school certificate, uh, living school certificate to begin to coach primary four and was giving me allowances. And I began to do all kinds of things. Spent three years saving money to go to secondary school. My classmates in primary six when we left school were in form four when I got to form one. But I am what I am by the grace of God today because of education. And now we have ruined education and all our own children are going abroad and we are, we are wasting a few... Look, what, 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 where is the manpower? Where are the people? I watched an interview of UCOPAS recently that could not even, they did not know the meaning of <laughs> NYSC. They could not give the meaning. And I was just am amazed at the level of deterioration that are taking place because those who, who are in charge of our affairs do not place any premium on, on, on human capital. It can't continue this way. So th this movement you are talking about, it will be like Save Nigeria movement in, in like manner. No, it's totally different. I'm keeping my powder dry. We are not marching streets. And it's not against government. But the people of this country will rise and they will demand what is theirs. We don't have to march the streets. But you see what will happen. Let's keep it. We'll roll. When are you rolling now? I will let you know. <laughs> will this lead into a political party? It can lead to anything that will save Nigeria. It can lead to anything. We can use existing platforms. We can create our own. But a mighty army is about to rise from the valley of dry bones. If you have ever read Ezekiel 37, the hopeless are going to get up and they're going to rise and demand for what is right. And God is going to look for the best of the north and the best of the south, according to Ezekiel 37, to come and steer the affairs of this nation. This boat must not sink. Would you be running for president? I'm a free citizen. I can run for anything. When that time comes, the whole world will know. I'm a free citizen. 
Nothing stops me. Nothing debars me. There's nothing that can say, oh, you can't run for this, you can't run for that. And I respect other people's uh, right also uh, to rise and run. Right now, that's not my immediate focus. My immediate focus is if there's no nation to preside over, so what are you running except you want to run out of the country? It's an act of service. I mean, that's what I believe it should be, perhaps. Some politicians don't think in that, in that regard that being in politics is an act of service. Uh, so the preparedness of mind is what I'm asking here. Whether or not Pastor Tunde Bakari might throw his hat in the ring in 2023. Is there a possibility of that? You can see my head that there's no heart there today to throw into an earring. I'm wearing my head straight and I'm focused on what I'm doing. But guess what? Whether as Pastor Tunde Bakari or as President Tunde Bakari, the initials will still remain PTB. That would be a very interesting one. And an easy switch, isn't it? <laughs> but, but let's look at it now and, and proffering solutions to the problems of this country there's a lot of things that people have said to fix our economy we need to divest. I've had this conversation with you but at this stage that we are in as a people where do you see what is the way out from your standpoint the first thing we need to do is to heal the cracks the fault lines are too many this nation is so terribly divided. That's why you are having people talking about uh, uh, Odudua Republic, IPOR, and all kinds of things. Uh, religion that should be worn like a private risk watch is a common issue. I have friends across the length and breadth of this nation, East, West, North, and South. I have good friends who are Muslims, and, 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 and we are bosom friends. I have Yorubas, I have Igbos, I have... I was, raised, I was born in the South and raised in the North. I was a Muslim who became a Christian. And I know that elite, elites use all these things. They, I don't want to call them ordinary Nigerians because they are citizens. There are Nigerians who really don't care about those things. And we need to reach those ones and give them hope before it's us against us. Instead of us coming together uh, to build, we need to fix the cracks and the hurts and the pain in this nation. Uh, you, you can't force a people to live together except you do things that appear fair to all. Do you understand me at all? This leader means business. And you need to engage and talk to people from time to time. You are a servant of the people, not their lord. The office of the president is a chief servant of the nation. The, the, how would you describe the kind of person you think should be Nigeria's next president? One who loves this nation truly, and one who is not going in there for what he can eat, one who is not going there for just to, to corner resources or anything or positions for his own people, one who is going to look for the best of the north, the best of the south, let those who have the, the wherewithal and who had proved it in their own private capacity who have done something with their lives, let be the ones that will assemble and say, it's time to build. Like Nehemiah did. He assembled the nobles. He said, look, the walls are broken down. The gates are burnt. Let's rise and build. It will take such a person. He must love this country because anyone plunging into uh, election in 2023 is just plunging his head like what they call Omorogu in Yoruba land, that you used to stir uh, 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 the pestle, in a small pestle, is like putting your head inside hot water. And therefore, you must go with a team and not go alone. Uh, when that time happens, you see what's going to happen. Uh, very shortly, you will see the formidable team that we are presenting to the nation uh, like a shadow cabinet, that these are the men that would do it. We are meeting right now. They can't even locate. They don't even understand what's about to hit the nation. But it's going to hit it big time in a positive manner. Not walking about the streets or damaging cars and, and burning down what is left. Uh, <laughs> so you have a list of those whom you have in mind already? Uh, not who I have in mind, who I know. Where, where, where would you, I mean, talking about fairness and the cleavages that have... Uh, uh, 
torn us apart as a people. Where do you think it's fair to have the president from in terms of rotation and zoning arrangement now? Listen, I've had all kinds of arguments about rotation. Uh, you can come from the north, and north has had it for uh, this number of years. I had all kinds of permutations going on. Uh, I also peep into social media sometimes. I see some platforms. Uh, some are saying, uh, Obasanjo plus uh, 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 Jonathan is 14 years. Yaradua plus Buhari is 10 years. The north still need four years. At this moment, what is needed is the person who can do it. Look at Look at, look at other nations of the world. Look, political parties will bring their best forward. And we just play uh, sectional, or what do you call it? Uh, my side, your side. It's our side now. I mean, the best candidate emerge. May God heal our land from, from such sad comments that the best candidate may not win. What we are faced with now is let the best of the best emerge. And those who have made something out of their lives in March, he can go to the south, he can go to the north. One man is only one seat. It's who surrounds that seat and what they're able to do. If it's an Igbo man, so be it. If it's a Yoruba man, so be it. If it's a Northern Hausa or Fulani, or uh, so, so, so be it. And I'm saying that passionately. Uh, fair is fair. If we have promised rotation, then let's face rotation. But if you have not promised rotation, it's not part of our constitution, let's face reality. It is not really where the person has come from that matters. It is what is able to do and deliver. Are you concerned about age also? Well, age is a constant factor in this world because the law of dimensional returns will make you be sleeping when you are in chambers and be dozing. And, and, but... Age is a, a function of the mind. How old was Ronald Reagan when he became president of America? And how old is uh, uh, the current president in America? Age is there, but the, the systems, the, this institution, the, the people that support them will make their age turn into grace right before, their eye, before your eyes. If you get a young person in his 40s who could do what uh, Obama did, why not? But in this world, and from scriptures, he said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Dreams are insight. Visions are foresight. It takes the insight of the old into the foresight of the young to have stability. There's no bird that can fly with one wing. There's no man that can clap with one hand. So we need both our old because of experience and things we have heard. And we need our young. I mean, I'm not going to sit on the seat of seven overseer for the rest of my life. So in order to start disengaging myself from my church at pastor for about 33 years now, I've raised new leaders who will do better than I've done because there's a nation to build and I'm preparing myself for that. So in conclusion now, uh, then the kind of Nigeria that you see is the kind of Nigeria that some people are uh, hoping that will be restructured. Do you still have that kind of thing? Was that on the kind of template that you agreed, for example, with President Buhari before he ran for office? In 2011, I sat with very brilliant minds for nines to carve out a manifesto for the CPC, Congress for Progressive Change. And almost everything that we had in that manifesto, you could find in APC manifesto also. What was the first thing in that manifesto? The Nigeria over restructured around true federal system, number one. And number two, that the issue of state of origin will no longer be part of our vocabulary or part of our, our system of doing things in this country. It will be state of residence, that a Nigerian can live anywhere he chooses. Look, a lopsided federal system where the central government is all powerful and the, <laughs> and the 
State governments who are supposed to be federating, federating units are so weak. It's not going to help anybody. We need strong center and strong states state that will also remove their noose on the neck of local government because that's where it's supposed to be happening. That's where the, the dividends of democracy need to be taking place. In the, when, when, we, when, when, we, when we were young, you see, at the University of Lagos, uh, or Trimbag Bing Gadania, former governor of uh, uh, Ogo State, and I, and a few others started what we call Diner Club. Diner Club became a youth wing for UPN. I was a student union leader. I contested for the presidency of the union in my, in my university days. And we would go to Park Lane in Apapa to learn how the sage, Shibabafemi Awolowo, how he was able to do what he did for Western region. If nothing had tampered with that, Western region was ahead of Singapore. And look at where we are today. All those things that were built have been destroyed. But another generation, a new breed without greed will arise. A radical opposition to corruption. Men and women who hate corruption with passion and who choose to win by righteousness, by fair play, by equity and justice will rise and rebuild the ancient ruins. Look, I believe this passionately and there's a meeting of the mind and a consensus ad idem that is going on now amongst people in the north, in the south, in the east, and the west of this country, and we will hit this country like a bank. God helping us. We believe that one person can drive that change. One sincere and truthful person. That is believed by the team. Listen, the captain is just to get the cup when you play football. They call the captain to have the cup if that team wins. But does he mean he's the only one that made it happen? No. The cup belongs to the team. Any kind of that bush is what they say. A tree does not make a forest. But there must be meeting of minds. For two cannot work together except they agree. You cannot be driving forward and somebody else is pulling it backwards. No. There must be agreement on what is to be done and you must tell Nigerians to hold you accountable with timelines of deliverables. On a final note, do you see in all of the people that you have, uh, the kind of qualities that you have described and the kind of team that you think uh, you're, 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 uh, you are working together with, that like you said you're going to build a shadow uh, kind of cabinet, is there anyone in this present government that fits the bill or that in, in the picture? A few, a few of them. And you're working with them? All by the grace of God. They are not necessarily at the center. But there are a few of them. A few also are in the center. And some are in the States. So, I can still call you a very good friend to President Muhammad Buhari. By the grace of God, from my side to his side. But you don't know what it is with from his side to your side. He doesn't have on my list. He's a very straightforward, simple person. And if we disagree, we'll agree again. It's happened before and it will happen again. You think he means well for this country? I think so. But... He's, he's found himself in overwhelming uh, uh, <laughs> hot soup, as I would say, and it takes time uh, to swallow hot okra. So God helping him, he will still have legacy because we are not going to keep quiet. We want him to have a legacy and we we'll continue to cry, even if it be on rooftop until that is done. PTB, I mean Pastor Tunde Bakari this time around. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Shil. Thank you so and much. And when it becomes PTB, President Tunde Bakari, I'll still grant you an interview. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I appreciate it. This is Channels Television. You've been watching a special interview with the overseer of the Citadel Global Community Church.